President Bola Tinubu over the weekend acknowledged that Nigerians are going through a lot, but that poverty and suffering is a worldwide phenomenon and not peculiar to Nigerians. The president seized the occasion to restate his commitment to confront those challenges head on and asked for the collective effort of Nigerians in that direction, as well as a change in mindset. President Tinubu underscored the importance of addressing fundamental issues such as banditry and terrorism, which hinder agricultural productivity and economic growth, and highlighted the need for improved infrastructure, including roads and transportation networks, to facilitate the movement of agricultural produce and reduce post-harvest -harvest losses. Well, Dayo Shobwale is a Rise News analyst, and he joins us now to discuss uh, President Tinubu's take on this matter, given the mood of the nation, and what should be done to address suffering in the land. Good afternoon, Mr. Shobwale. Welcome to News Day. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure of being here as well. Right. Straight into it. A lot was said in that statement by the president. Uh, however, everybody held on to that one, uh, one statement, which is that poverty is not unique to Nigeria. I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, your thoughts on this, uh, you know, this statement? Uh, I think the president, even though he had an audience before him, was literally talking to himself. He was wearing his thinking cap. You know, there is something called soliloquy or self-introspection. I think that is what he was doing. Even though the president of the series and all the people who are in front of me. He was thinking aloud about the problems on his table. And it's not as if I pity him. They say, on easy lies the head, yeah. that he has the crown. You see, he knows the problems. He has taken actions on infrastructure, education, food, insecurity, and all that. But see him talking from another perspective now. That is this perspective of Values. Values. Why will some people be destroying railway lines? Why will some people be causing darkness in the Northeast by, you know, sabotaging uh, transmission lines? Huh. And so on. Banditry kidnapping. Those are the problems on this table. So, to me, I was thinking aloud. And I think uh, if leaders do such introspection, Albeit publicly, maybe, maybe, maybe their followers will have some empathy for the problems they are facing. So essentially, you know, he was talking like Henry V in Shakespeare. Mm. So when the blast of war blows in our ears, then we take the action of the tiger. But he is the man on whose table the box stops, and. I don't know whether to applaud him or to pity him, but he's speaking candidly and outwardly about the enormous economic challenges we face. Let's leave it at that for now. All right, in introspect, uh, should Nigeria even be categorized as a sovereign nation despite uh, human and natural uh, uh, resources in abundance? And, um, you know, if you look back, what actually went wrong? Yeah, a lot. A lot. And we are a suffering nation, mm. whether you like it or not. Um, Fella put it in that fine music. So far, so far, mm -hmm. for what? Enjoy for heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians are suffering. In that, you see, um, the, 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 the standard of living has deteriorated. Position power has diminished. Cost of living is swearing. That's the long and short of it. You see, uh, the Yoruba have a saying that uh, when you take food out of poverty, the rest is easy. Uh, there's food insecurity. He reminisces, uh, reminisces about it. That you see, even, even if you have the food ready, if the goods, if the roads are not good, how will the goods get to the market? And when they get to the market because of cost of maintenance, mm. the prices will swell. So this is somebody thinking aloud about his problems. And I really, okay, maybe I should put it in now. Do you get me? Because, see, I was just looking through the papers. See how many loans we have taken on infrastructure, on uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, on food, also. So these are things that are work in progress. We should not manifest immediately. I'm sure left to him, he will just, he will reach, you know, these things happen like yesterday. 
But then they will take time. And people don't seem to have the patience. Mm -mm. People don't seem to have the patience. So, to say that uh, you are not only people who so it's a relative something. It's a relative exp expression. There's no nation in the world where people don't have challenges. Okay, they just had election in the EU now. The anti-migrant people, the, uh, the people who don't want people to come around there because you are pitching because people, uh, 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 you are pitching people because of war. But then when you bring them to your country, they don't assimilate, they're attacking your culture. They voted for parties that you would have called xenophobic mm -hmm. under some circumstances. That's the essence of politics. If a political leader does not perform well, he should be chastised at the polls. And if he has done well, he will be rewarded. Before, they were talking that these far-right people in Europe were the extremists, mm -hmm. but now they are the realists. They have no sense in the European. That is why, you see, uh, French President Macron mm -hmm. was so uh, confident. Mm -hmm. He said, if ever, Le Pen, his part, uh, Pen's party, mm -hmm. ever wins that election, he will call a fresh election. Mm -hmm. And he has done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, if a president thinks aloud, I think he should be allowed. And if he talks about suffering, I think it's relative. And it should be taken in the appropriate context and not blown out of proportion as if he's being discreet or is nonchalant about the plight of those who are suffering. Okay, let me take it from that point because I think it all comes down to body language, which, uh, uh, you know, those who are critiquing this comment feel that it's misplaced in that we've just saw, we've just seen 21 billion used to refurbish or to complete a palace for the vice president. Uh, we are now seeing conversation getting started about uh, acquisition of a new presidential fleet um, of, of aircrafts. Those are the types of conversations happening yet we're still talking about poverty and suffering and so forth. So when the opposition spoke out uh, about, you know, the, the statement, that's where they're coming from, that, well, how can the same, uh, if you're calling it self introspection, how can the same introspection that uh, claims to have some sort of empathy for the suffering of the people have just spent, you know, just a colossal amount of money on a building where somebody is going to live for four years and then they're going to vacate and the next person will come. And presidential fleets of which, uh, you know, the president himself is, as a private citizen, is somebody who, who, who used to buy or who owns private jets. Uh, so maybe his sacrifice should be to, to use his own private jets for now until the country's suffering has subsided. Where do we reconcile these different realities? Yeah, you are the one creating the discrepancy. <laughs> you are the making. You see, I have said my own. That on this last year that we have the crown, you get me, and you should compare likes with like. You are talking of misery and suffering now. You are talking of opulence and extravaganza. They are not the same thing, even though they appear in the same political system. Yeah. But you take issues as they come. That was what uh, Baseki was trying to say yesterday. <laughs> that you see, we should talk to each other. We should say the truth to each other so that we can put this together and make, and make uh, progress economically and rescue our people from poverty. Um, I won't join issues with you because if I join issues, we'll be talking about the, 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 the salaries of the legislators who came to visit him. Uh, those are opulent people. That is the system, and they are in power. Do you get me? But if one of them can climb down from the IOS and still admit that people are suffering, mm -hmm. that is a, a realistic appraisal, mm -hmm. which you should try to appreciate instead of escalating the, right. the extravaganza <laughs> side of it. All right, yes. so on that note, uh, Mr. Dayo Shibu, Ali Rise News Analyst, would like to thank you for your thoughts on those uh, issues. Always a pleasure to have you, as always. Thank you.